What is up guys, I'm Aaron Schiavone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am a personal trainer and online coach who specializes in helping men and women just like you to lose your body fat without having to give up any of the fun things in life like food, alcohol, pizza, having a social life, going on holiday, all that jazz. Before we get started, make sure that you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Also, don't forget, you can go follow me over on my Instagram at Aaron Schiavone PT, where I post much more regular and up-to-date content. So the big topic of today's video is going to be all about how you can maintain and keep as much muscle mass as possible whilst losing fat. So to get us started, there is weight loss and then there's fat loss. And they are two very different things. We want to be losing fat, we don't necessarily want to be losing weight. And you certainly do not want to be losing muscle. For the love of God, we don't want to lose muscle. Now the problem is, to lose weight, as you'll have heard me say before, you need a calorie deficit. But one of the issues with a calorie deficit is you're going to lose muscle as well as fat. And that is what we do not want to happen. And you've got to remember, fat loss only happens in a calorie deficit. It's the only way we lose weight. And if you don't believe that, then you don't believe in physics, and then you're just a fucking idiot. You, you idiot. You're honestly an idiot. Because it's physics. So with that, I've put together eight, eight, eight of my top tips, the things you have to absolutely must do to maintain as much muscle mass while you're trying to lose that stubborn body fat. So starting with point number one, and point number one is the most important, and that is eating enough protein. I cannot stress enough that this is the single most important factor when it comes to maintaining as much muscle mass as possible while you're losing fat. It's more important than your meal timing. It's more important than supplementation. It's more important than how clean the foods are that you're eating. Nothing is more important than getting enough protein in your diet. Even in the absence of a proper weight training routine, getting enough protein is still going to help you maintain as much muscle as you can. But you're probably asking, how much should you be eating per day? Well, it's usually somewhere around about 1.8 to 2.3 grams per pound is usually sufficient enough for most people. Okay, step number two is maintaining strength. So you spend all that time building all that lovely muscle in the gym. I'm assuming you don't want to lose it, right? Yeah, didn't think so. After protein intake, the most important thing we want to do is maintaining our strength. On a fat loss diet, just maintaining our strength, so keeping the intensity the same and the weight on the bar the same, is going to help us to maintain our muscle mass. But if that signal goes away, if you're not getting that stimulus, then you can kiss your muscle goodbye as you kiss that signal goodbye. And this is why the myth or perception that lifting lighter weights for higher reps when we're trying to you know, get lean and get toned is the absolute worst thing you could possibly believe if you're wanting to keep your muscle mass when you're dieting. I mean, it's like, ugh. No, God! No, God, please, no, no! Who keeps preaching this shit? Seriously. What you need to do is be lifting the same weight when you're dieting as you were when you were not dieting. We don't want a decrease in strength. That is what we're aiming for. So keep the weights the same, keep the intensity the same. So step number three is reducing training volume or frequency. So I just mentioned that we want to be keeping the intensity high. So the intensity doesn't drop, but the frequency and the volume that you were training at when you were not on a diet was sufficient at the time to give you the training stimulus that you needed. But now that you're on a diet, you're having restricted calories, so a restricted energy intake, the amount of training you were doing is likely to be too much for you to optimally recover from. And if we're not able to recover properly from the training we're doing, that leads to a decrease in strength. A decrease in strength leads to a decrease in muscle mass, which is not what we want when we're dieting. 
So we're moving on to step number four, and that is that your pre and post workout nutrition still matters. Arguably, it matters more when you're trying to lose fat than it did when you were trying to build muscle. Your recovery, your work capacity, your training tolerance will all be worse because you're in a calorie deficit than they were when you weren't. So that makes your pre and post workout nutrition now more important than it was before you were on a diet because it's key to get these things right. We need to make sure we're nailing it now more than ever. So you're probably asking, what should you be doing for your pre and post-workout meals? And it's really simple. Just get a good amount of protein and carbohydrates one to two hours before and after you train. Doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. Forget supplements, specific types of food. It's just some protein and some carbs. That is it. On to point number five, and that is not having an excessive calorie deficit or continuing to cut calories. As you've hopefully learned by now, because I'm hammering at home enough fucking times, is that you need a calorie deficit in order to lose fat. Now, calorie deficit can be looked at in three main ways, a low, a moderate, or a high calorie deficit. And that's how far below your maintenance calories you drop. Now, ideally, most people would benefit from a moderate calorie deficit of around about 20%. I tend to start people on 10% and we go from there. But the problem with a big calorie deficit, apart from being more hungry, affecting your hormones, affecting your recovery, your sleep, your libido, and generally just making you miserable and not being fun, is that it's going to severely impact how well you can recover from the training that you are doing. And as I previously just mentioned, a reduction in how well you recover is going to lead to a decrease in strength, which leads to a decrease in muscle mass. So it's important that you just stick to a moderate and sensible calorie deficit. A big deficit is probably gonna do you more harm than good in the long run. Okay guys, on to point number six, and that is taking regular diet breaks. Now, if there's one universal truth about fat loss and a calorie deficit is that it fucking sucks. <sighs> if you've ever been there and you've done that, you know it's not the most fun thing in the world. So it's good to take a break from a diet every now and then for both physical and mental benefits. Now, different people will give you different opinions on what they think the ideal length of a diet break would be but I would usually suggest it'd be somewhere between one to two weeks just to give your body and your brain a good recovery from the stresses and strains of being in a prolonged calorie deficit. Why is that important? Because any improvements in the area of your physical and mental recovery is going to be able to help you to maintain your strength levels and maintain your muscle mass as you diet. Step seven is not doing excessive cardio. So as I've been mentioning in this video, weight training has to stay in. It's got to stay around in order to help you maintain that muscle mass. But cardio is not as important as everybody thinks it is from a weight loss and fat loss perspective. And to be honest, is for the most part, largely unnecessary. Wait a minute, wait, wait a minute. And honestly, if there's anything more overrated and hyped up about losing fat or building muscle, it's doing cardio. Now, if your main goal is endurance or performance, then I obviously have a completely different opinion on that. But from a fat loss and body composition perspective, I just don't think it's that important. And to be honest, I hate cardio. Why cardio? Yeah, no, don't put me down for cardio. Don't get me started on fasted cardio, because that is a load of... Uh, nah, nah. I've already done a video all about fasted cardio that I'm gonna link here. The link for that will be in the description below as well. Check that out so you know how I feel about fasted cardio. In fact, when it comes to cardio, I do very little myself. Even when I've been on cuts, I've managed to lose many kilos of weight without doing hardly any cardio. And for most people with general body composition goals, I just don't think that doing a lot of cardio is particularly useful or necessary. If we could focus on it purely through doing weight and strength training and controlling our cardios through dieting. That way we can save cardio as a secondary tool that we can use 
further down the line in the weight loss process when we're at a point where it's just not practical or there's no desire to drop calories any lower and we'd rather just burn them through cardio instead. So point number eight is prioritizing your recovery. Now active recovery and recovery of any kind is super important when it comes to anything to do with your health and fitness. But if there's one aspect of recovery that none of us are really paying enough attention to, it's getting enough sleep. And that's because sleep and the quality of your sleep massively affects your hormone levels. And your hormone levels have a massive effect on whether you are going to be losing muscle or burning fat when you are in a calorie deficit. Cortisol, which is an inflammatory stress hormone, is higher in people who have lack of sleep or get like too little sleep, poor quality sleep. And the problem with cortisol is that it helps to promote fat storage and then muscle degradation, so muscle loss. So high levels of cortisol, easy bad thing. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, on the flip side, we have human growth hormone, which helps in muscle protein synthesis, so basically growing, building, repairing, maintaining muscle mass, and that peaks at night. So we need to be getting lots of good sleep to be able to keep our human growth hormone levels high and our cortisol levels lower. So guys, I highly recommend you start implementing these eight steps now into your fat loss efforts and it will make a huge difference to how you look and how you feel at the end of it if we're not losing all that valuable muscle mass. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, hit that little notification bell. You can also still follow me over on my Instagram at Aaron PT. The link is in the description box below. If you hit that notification bell, you will be informed about when I release my next video. And speaking of which, my next video is going to be on why you've been going to the gym, trying to work hard, but you're not seeing any results from the work you're doing, whether that's building muscle or losing weight. I'm gonna tell you all about what you're doing wrong. Also, make sure you check out these other videos on fat loss, fitness, and life in general. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.